Well now, that was quite the update. Welcome to No Strings PLD, my name is Stefan, and Jim Turn recently gave us an update on the Command & Conquer remasters, namely how they intend to handle the FMV cutscenes. Let's cut to the chase. Unfortunately, despite tracking down a plethora of old Westwood assets, and you really need to watch the video for the journey Jim went on, the original master tapes are still missing, likely destroyed. This leaves us with the very compressed .vqa files from the DOS versions of the games, and the versions from the PlayStation ports, which had a slightly higher colour depth. These cutscenes will be AI upscaled, and I want to talk about that first. There have been a few fun attempts to upscale the old cutscenes recently, and actually a few commenters have asked me to look into them for the lore videos on this channel. If I'm honest, it's not something I was all that interested in. The upscales look pretty decent, but the problem was with the way that the VQA files were compressed. In order to fit the two hours worth of footage onto two CD-ROMs, not only was it reduced to 320 by 156 pixels at 15 frames per second, but also the compression codec Westwood developed was, shall we say, very characterful. It was very blocky, and not all that much like regular video compression. I brought this up last time, but let's go into much more depth. Here's a cutscene from CNC3. It's at 1280 by 720, so if you're watching this video at 1080p on a 1920 by 1080 screen, and you have this video playing full screen, do that now if you're not, then the footage you're watching will be pixel perfect. The objects in the image are smooth around the edges, it's using a pretty standard compression codec. Now here's what it looks like with a quarter the resolution, but stretched out to the same size. This is what low quality video normally looks like. Video is meant to be scaled linearly, as in with a blurry interpolation between pixels. Think of YouTube videos that were uploaded years ago, that kind of thing. If we instead take a look at the VQA cutscenes from the DOS version, we have much sharper edges. Everything is much sharper due to the reduced colour depth of 256 colours. I think it's 256, might be wrong. So there are fewer colours available to smoothly gradient between things. The trade-off is a reduction of grain, or that jpeg -y noise around objects, and instead looks a little like the more video gamey dithering effect. However, here's what it looks like when stretched linearly. Really, really bad. This is why in all of my videos when I use VQA footage, I instead stretch the cutscenes using nearest neighbour scaling. Basically pixel doubling, quadrupling, that kind of thing. This is the best scaling method for old games. You should by the way check to make sure that your GPU supports integer scaling if your CNC games look blurry. If not, run them windowed and use this program from Steam. Anyway, compare this cutscene using linear scaling with this one using nearest neighbour. You may disagree, but because of how video gamey the codec is, I think the one on the right looks much better. I'm also a fan of preserving the original footage as much as possible, which is why this is my preferred method of presenting the cutscenes. Alright, let's instead take a look at the cutscenes from the PlayStation versions. These versions are again 320 by 176 at 15 FPS, but they were instead compressed using MJPEG compression, which was the standard video codec that the PlayStation used and they were created from the original master tapes as the source, rather than recompressing the VQA files. Now, MJPEG is a more orthodox codec for video. It has a much greater colour depth, and is by far less blocky. However, the mosquito noise around objects is more prevalent in these files, even when there's not much going on on the screen. A problem which is exacerbated by the tiny video size. Now because it's a more standard video codec, it actually scales up linearly pretty decently. It looks like low quality video, again I mentioned the old YouTube analogy, but it doesn't look great when scales near its neighbour. This is the primary difference between the VQA files from the DOS games and the MJPEG files from the PlayStation games. VQA is classic retro FMV and is best scaled near its neighbour to maintain those sharp pixels and MJPEG is a more typical video format that is best scaled linearly. And going back to AI upscaling, these algorithms are generally trained on standard video codecs. Of course they are, that makes sense. They are designed to upscale low quality video by inventing what it thinks should be between the pixels. The VQA style of blocky compression is not something that these neural networks are trained on, 
which is why I was rather stingy about considering AI upscaling the cutscenes, they didn't quite come out right. They don't really know what to do with pixelated imagery. For instance, here is an AI upscaled screenshot of Red Alert. Looks decent from a distance, but if you get closer, you can tell it didn't really know what it was looking at. This is made worse with VQA by the sudden shift of noise every keyframe interval, which seems to confuse the heck out of these algorithms. The MJPEG files are the style of compression that the networks are more familiar with, so that could work. I don't want to just nick someone else's videos, so check the description for links to two attempts by these two channels to AI upscale the cutscenes, one using the VQAs as the source, and one using the MJPEGs. Unsurprisingly, it's the MJPEG one that looks way better with the AI upscaling. As for the other CNC games, Tibson again used VQA for its cutscenes, albeit a slightly better version with a higher resolution, but it still has that nice dithering, so I still use Nearest Neighbour. Red Alert 2 was the first CNC to natively use a more standard video compression, namely Bink, which is why this channel was able to achieve better results with upscaling. Again, link below. Problem. The PlayStation games didn't include all the cutscenes. Most of them are there, and Retaliation had a collection of cutscenes that were unique to that game and not on PC, but for instance, this great cutscene is only available as VQA. When you kill one, it is a tragedy. When you kill 10 million, it is a statistic. <laughs> Thus bringing us back to the plan for the remasters. Working in concert with Westwood veteran Joe Bostic over at Petroglyph and the Community Council, Jim announced the plan to use AI upscaling, which sounds to be tuned to work best with this particular source material. It'll be using the PlayStation footage as a source for all the videos which are available, including the Retaliation exclusives. So welcome back, General Carville. Ants? Is this some kind of a joke? You got ants in your pants? Call an exterminator. I'm on vacation. It also sounds like slightly higher quality versions of some of these videos were on the found tapes, so bonus. Taking a closer look at a short snippet of available footage, we can see the VQA version on the left and the remastered footage on the right. This footage is unmistakably upscaled from the MJPEG files, so for clarity, we haven't yet seen what the remastered VQA footage will look like. Now, it looks to me like somewhere in the process of making this announcement video, there has been a dip in quality. The video registers as using progressive scan, but there's some combing indicative of interlacing, and the whole thing is just slightly fuzzy. You can even see this over the VQA footage, which looks like it should be sharp. Looking at the borders of the videos, it's not quite right. What I'm saying is that this announcement video appears to be of a slightly lower visual quality than it's supposed to be, so what we're seeing for the remastered footage is actually not completely indicative of the files they have generated. Just wanted to make that clear. Anyway, compare what we have here with the raw MJPEG of the same scene. Overall, accounting for the low quality of the YouTube video itself, I'm pretty impressed with what they've been able to make. Excellent work, folks. This was a tricky situation to get right, and I think you've done the originals justice. Though, I can't help but hope for a toggle for the VQAs with integer scaling. Just an idea. My only gripe is the frame interpolation to achieve 30 FPS, but that's just my strong personal bias against frame interpolation in general. Speaking of, turn off the motion interpolation settings on your TVs for goodness sake. Maybe I've been looking at the raw files for too long, but I think they still look great at 15 frames. And this is coming from someone with a 144Hz monitor. Still, since the vast majority of the FMVs are static cameras with talking heads, it's not all that egregious and seems to work pretty well. <laughs> Thanks for not trying to reach 60 FPS though, bloody hell. Finally is a new feature that I cannot tell you how much I am excited for. A gallery of B-roll footage from the filming of the cutscenes. Four hours worth of unseen footage found in this old Westwood archive are being included in the remasters. Jim also hints at photos, concept art, and development notes, some from Joe Bostick's personal archives, which is pretty exciting. In this picture, I think we can also see the old install video as item number zero, and number three might be a VQA slash MJPEG comparison, or maybe a VQA slash remaster comparison. I guess we'll find out. 
Shout out, by the way, to the fantastic Eric Martin, pictured here in his role as GDI General Shepard. Sadly, Eric passed away last year, but it's wonderful to hear all this old footage of these actors has been found after all these years. One final thing in this gallery is unreleased stuff from Frank Klopaki. This is really exciting stuff. The first test demo of Hellmarch. It sounds like Frank has dug out some old files and some of this stuff is going to be included. Over the years, fans have found unused and lost music tracks in the files of the games, such as a similar beta version of Hellmarch 2 hidden in the files of Red Alert 2. A few of them have been put up on Frank's website Jukebox, and it seems that some of these known tracks will be included in the regular game's soundtrack. Question is, how many more Lost tracks exist that we've never even heard of? I recently read about a Lost track called Hold On, which I'd never actually heard of before, and maybe we'll finally get the answer about the difference between Await and Afterlife. Alright, let's wrap up with the updates since the last time. Firstly, Kia Huntsinger is returning to reprise her role as Eva in Tiberian Dawn, though there's a toggle if you prefer her original voice files. In the teaser, she sounds absolutely spot on. Great work from Frank and the team for updating the voice lines, and a huge welcome back to Kia. Reinforcements have arrived. Reinforcements have arrived. As for Red Alert, the announcer was originally played by Martin Alper, who unfortunately passed away several years ago, so the original voice lines will be used with some remastering. Remember that name, by the way. He'll be mentioned next time in the Dune documentary. There was also an update about how multiplayer is planned to work. I won't go into all the details since the links are in the description and there's a lot of information on it, but it all sounds pretty great. Kind of reminiscent of the lobbies from OpenRA. And yes, that means skirmish for Tib Dawn. And finally, this image posted to Petroglyph's website, where we can see some updated graphics from Tib Dawn showing definite improvements from the gameplay reveal and the first look at Red Alert Remastered in-game, which is actually stunning. Before I head off, Jim said that this week is going to be an interesting week, so there may be more news on the way. I may not cover it in video form just yet, I'm aiming to stick with periodic wrap-ups, so make sure to keep an eye on the CNC subreddit for the latest stuff. Big thanks to Jim Turn and all the teams. I'd also like to thank the No Strings PRD channel patrons for their very generous support. Join us next time for the previously scheduled program on Westwood's Dune series, and how this forgotten franchise changed the games industry. My name is Stefan, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>